Welcome back, my friends, to TNO, the last days of Europe. I'm your host, of course, Mr. Muckle Lover. But right now, on screen, we have Stalinist speech. And like I said before in the first episode, if you'd like to read about the decisions and events that touch base upon various different members of the Komi Republic that were not really too interested in this campaign, please go right ahead. But thank you, Stalina. Now let the dates, debates begin, because right now we have a little Congress in which we're having all sorts of debates raging on with the coalition. Um, if I can't remember if I actually read this, but if you like to read it, please go right ahead as well. Input from the Assembly. And this it was regarding, I believe, Deputy Kosijin. So, although they are not running, their opinions are just as valuable. But with damage control. Fake news, everybody. Fake news. So, here we go. There we go. Cool. So let's keep going on. I wanted to make sure that I showed you pretty much everything that is going on. But we do have colonial, colonial uh, coalition negotiations going on. If here's the speech about the casualty. So it is what it is. Uh, and he was a good man. Someone has been killed. Oh, uh, Mezlauk has been shot and killed. Cool. And Kosijin speak. Speech. Once again. To Moscow. Here we go. And the coalition negotiations. But election day preparations. An election is not something that can be organized on the spot, even if the radicals would believe otherwise. We must now begin the process of readying the poll booth, setting out flyers, organizing the locations, and more of the standard procedure that bores our legislators to no end. As usual, we will call upon ready volunteers to do their duty to democracy, and to do these tasks for us, and in all this, of course. We must also be aware of the radicals, for the idea of preparation is something much more sinister. And here we have Voss Nesinski's speech, but... We don't care much for Mr. Von Nesenski's. Good speech, Comrade President, and not up to standards. Well, oh well, that's okay. Like I said, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. But there aren't dangerous extremists in the administration, are there? Of course not. But we do have a couple of comments. Uh, a couple of you guys recommended that we keep going for the Red Lady. Yes, we are. We're definitely going. And Serov Defects. Oh, boy. A pleasure to meet you, Comrade. Oh, what is that? Ivan Alexandrovich Serov, ex-NKVD officer and fierce patriot of the uh, motherland. I have a very favorable offer for your boss, Gumileyev. A pleasure to meet you. National Socialism Party. Huh. Cool. Very cool. And there is Omar Alif Saifuddin the third, Something like that. And... Ah, yes. Oh, wait, they're getting raided. I thought we were raiding them. Bulgaria says, then the nomination. Alright, so let's see what happens. With the end of the speech, as a brief interlude came, the day had advanced as each participant had given their speech. More mediocre food was shared, along with whatever good tobacco could be scrounged up in side rooms, a few whispered con conspiratorially. Was it true that Kostigin's speech had been a dig at Stalinist suspense? There were indeed persistent allegations that the rising star of Comey's politics valued the safety of the nation more than his democratic institutions. Others questioned or discussed the rumors of a secret falling out between Kostigin and Vosnesinski. All this theorizing was ended when current Vice President Rodionov called everyone back to the main assembly room. Voting was to begin on who the democratic coalition would run. Oh, very cool. Very, very cool. And we don't need to do that one just yet. We can invest in this stuff, but nope. I don't feel like it. We're going to save our PP for this future. And Vosnesinski secures the nomination, even though last time Zidana died. So it's good that... And I'm going to say this wrong. Bukharina. Bukharina is leading. Svetlana Bukharina. Because that was one of the comments. I kept saying Bukharina wrong, which I just did. But I'm going to assume it's more like a Bukharina. Bukharina. So if I'm saying it wrong, I probably am. So I apologize for my mispronunciations. I'm... Pretty sure I'm like 0% Russian. But it is what it is. Election Day preparations. The dual disappointment. Oh boy, bad word, Vosnesinski. Oh no, it's not who we wanted, but we who we will have to defend. Oh well, hopefully he loses. Well, unionists win their elections, but making an example regarding Suslov as well as Serov. So, there you go if you'd like to read that. A traitor's due. Increases the influence of Ivan Serov. National daddyism. Decreases the influence of the left. Oh no, very strong. Moderate, significant. Oh boy. Let's see. Another comment was next time we should go with ultra visionary decision or just the direction next time. Uh, actually, there's quite a bit of support for me to do that. Because Comey is so ideologically divided, I will play as them quite a few different times. So we'll get there. But the district, once again, the district is what it is. And every election is determined by the people who show up. A place for all of us. Well, until we start purging people and start cooing each other. Then it's probably not a place for us. And I'm not going to suppress anybody else because we're already pretty good. At least we're bigger than the center, which is nice. Please. Can we, I guess we were successful. We're importing new industrial equipment. Why are we looking for this stuff anyways? 
looking pretty good. But let's go ahead and read the next one as well. Ensure internal stability. In recent days, it has been reported that our party is a mess in certain areas, such as the fact that debates over sometimes trivial things can run hot and wild between our deputies, as well as growing factionalism and refusal of cooperation between party members, while normally this has been allowed under the perpetrator's defense of freedom of opinion and expression. The upcoming election is one of the most critical in our history, and the Democratic Party cannot permit these problems any longer. The th through district distinct methods, we will ensure that everyone sits down and shuts up, united as one party, no longer shall the chamber erupt into arguing every other speech, and no longer shall we tolerate the cracks between our wings. We will be as one together we must be, for the radicals shall come to as one as well. The brawl. Oh boy. Oh well, if you like the brawl, please go right ahead, but hammered and sickled. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ah, the clash of shadows. Oh, look at that. Wait, what is this? Oh boy. Less political power gain, recovery rate, ideology drift defense, social democrat, social liberal, and daily authoritarian democrat support? Not bad. But election day preparations. So that's probably good to read this. The time has come to prepare for elections. A lot has to be done, and we have to make sure we do it right. Polling booths need to be set up, and counters will need to be hired. We must ensure the election day goes as planned. Of course, we are presented with a few options to make sure the election goes through how we want it to. We can always make it easier for our voters by easing up on registration and making sure we have enough polling places. This would make sure everyone ends up with a chance to vote. However... That could come with the cost of giving the opposition and radicals too much power. It could be safer to invest in some voter suppression in the pillarized neighborhoods. That means we wouldn't need to worry about some undesirable people starting to meddle with our democracy. We need to make a choice, though. Our democracy very well could hang in the balance. What harm could a little bit of suppression do? We're a democracy, and we need the people to vote. Hmm. Sure, why not? Ah, loot! I love scavenging for loot. It makes me feel so good on the inside, even though, well, it makes people do a little bit better. I think I'll get rid of Suslov. Go after this. Uh, calculate the bombing interval. Protect the people. I like the land force. That's actually that, that actually might help us out when we get to war with other warlords. But a person should always feel safe in their own home, whether from the inside or out. While they do not dare touch their cities, bandits and thugs have been roamed to roam the countryside, seeking to rob and maim to their heart's content. In addition, the German bombings have been a constant source of casualties, blasting apart anyone that is unfortunate enough to be near the, their dastardly weapons. People cannot vote if they're busy with other things such as surviving. Therefore, we must embark on a program to cleanse the bandits from our countryside, guard our borders from any foreign incursions, and defend ourselves from the air raids. Only then shall democracy flourish. Absolutely. Do we just get another one? Yes, we did. Uh, I love research speed. Research, research, research. Oh, this St. George? Oh, say it so. Let us raid your little booties. Please, please, please. Watch the radicals into the unknown. Well, how about we do something else, such as the means... Municipal Pacification Act. The paramilitary situation has been said to be getting completely uncontrollable. The general uptick in overall violence over time. Several politicians in the National Assembly, spearheaded by Svetlana, Stalina, Alexei Kosic, and leaders of the Democratic Center, have proposed a rather drastic bill, one that has been said to increase the police powers within problem areas of the Republic to levels not seen since the days of the Bukharin. Bukharin. While many politicians in the National Assembly have rallied against the bill, or railed against the bill, calling it a tyrannical government outreach, and a naked, 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 ooh, attempt at shutting down a political opposition to the current ruling parties, one can also argue that this opposition is just an attempt to prevent these politicians' illicit sources of assistance from being persecuted. Oh no. Whether they like it or not, the bill will come up to a vote, and it will all come down to the democratic process, whether we like it or not. Oh, come on. Booty raid, booty raid, booty raid. Oh, they refuse. Oh, I love the raiding part. Oh, we're losing. We're losing. Nope. Just kidding. We're winning. Ah, we love it. Thank you very much. And agriculture methods. We love it. Yes. Leave us. Leave us. Spoils of war. Oh, Madagascar is falling apart. Beautiful. Soon enough, it will be time for the German bombs to stop. Well, uh, let's calculate the bombing intervals. Each and every week brings heckish Armageddon down upon our lands as the Nazi do drain down their bombs upon the people of Russia. New orphans are created every day and hospitals are always filled to the brim for days afterwards. Especially Tuesday, for that's when they all come. The Germans are as predictable as they are evil. It is no coincidence that the bombs will always rain down at specific times and then more on certain days than others. That their Wehrmacht seeks to enjoy the coffee breaks at their designated hours and days and not any other. They will not stop our little democracy. All it takes is a little calculation and any interruption of the election will no longer come from the air the municipal municipal i always say that word wrong municipal pacification bill uh if uh, svetlana selena's introduced the municipal 
pacification bill, calling for vastly increased police funding and rights to use force to break up paramilitary movements, particularly ones involved in the street violence. It's a bland broadside against the commies and passionaries, but go a long way in restoring order to the streets. However, both the DSMP and the SNR are worried about public reaction. Killing the bill would make them look weak on crime, but endorsing would ensure its passage and make them seem to support police brutality and politicize attacks on their opponents. It remains to be seen what they do about the bill. Endorse the bill, passing it? Like you do get some more uh, stability. Uh, they kill the bill in the committee. I love it. And watch the radicals. Uh, the radicals have never believed in the democratic process, even if they say otherwise. While they have been rather quiet in the days leading up to the election, it's always possible that they may come out of the shadows at any time. The chess mass is on either side, so their aces up their sleeves, and there's no exactly telling what they have in store. Observation of the paler militaries is necessary, and any left-wing or right-wing activity will be snuffed out and found out. If they have any funny tricks they wish to play, we will know, and we will fight back. Maybe. If we feel like it. If we feel like it. Preparing for the bombings, now comes the time to decide the location of where the polling places should be. There are many safe locations where polling booths would fit right in. Places that are safe from German bombers and political extremists, while we will definitely make use of these locations, we do have some more or less safe choices. We can make some strategic mistakes and place polling booths in disagreeable neighborhoods in more exposed, dangerous locations. That way, we can discourage people from who might not want to vote and ensure the safety of our power in the elections. No, 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 no. Let's not be too corrupt here, you know? We want the political power. And into the unknown. Months of rigorous preparation, days of campaigning, enjoyed or dreaded, participated or flee from it, the election comes at all the same. Now comes the final trial of democracy and the ruling with it. Each and every preparation that we've done for this event will now pay off either or let us down. This critical election decides our fate and the future. Some doubt our chances and others wish us dead, but no matter what happens, democracy will always prevail in the end. Hopefully, but taking note. St. George's got more? Ah, I love St. George. We need to keep an eye on the radicals and ensure they don't subvert the election process for their own goals. They can't be given the chance to sabotage our entire democracy, can they? Their every move will need to be closely scrutinized to ensure the safety of our elections. Who knows what the colonies or fascists will do if given the chance? They very well could corrupt the process and take power themselves through manipulation and intimidation. To keep a close watch on the radicals, more informers will need to be placed within their organizations. Perhaps a few bugs in the telephones could also do the trick. We must know of their plans before they can take any action. Uh, it doesn't really matter. If we do the right a little bit, it's okay. Uh, because they're eight. That lowered by two. That's like nothing. Oh, the center's doing really well. Uh, that's not good. But hopefully we get to coup them later on anyways. Suppress the right. Ooh, you know what? I don't want to do that too much. Just because I want to get this a little bit higher than the center. Just because we can. Um, okay, cool. And one last promise. Well, if I read about this, please go right ahead. In vino veritas. Oh boy. I wanna beat you up, 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 up. The Equal Zoning Act. Redistricting is a concern that has long affected many elements within our republic, from the disenfranchised refugees in the peripheries of our cities to the politicians attempting to organize their re-elections. Re this process is infamously arduous within Komi and Siktivkar, specifically thanks to the bombings and high volumes of population transfers, thanks to refugees and our lack of resources to run, run accurate censuses. This naturally has led to the environment in which more or less any sort of population distribution can be constructed and made to look official without cooking the books too much. Beyond the curtain, the president has spoken to several deputies on the redistricting board, giving a favor to certain politicians to make them unassailable in the districts. Could be just the incentive they need to throw more of their ground support behind the government's initiatives. Ah, uh, and I love beating people up when they don't even know it. Oh, wait. Are we getting raided? I hope not. We only have one loot. Oh, we have to wait for this. Okay. I thought we were getting raided again for some reason. There you go, son. Food for the hungry. Good, good, good. We can't let our hungry people go hungry. Because we don't want them to be hungry. Alright, so after we suppress the right... So it's at, what, 83? Okay, that's not bad. I like that significant and that significant. Into the unknown, my friends. The defense of the Republic, which actually sounds like a pretty good thing, but violence at the polls. Oh, no. Violence at the polls. If you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. But an unacceptable violation of the rights. And, oh, the reports of threatening rights activity. Oh, look at that. When will it end? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, well. <laughs> Uh, it really, I'm saving up all this political power for when we have to core stuff, so. The minority rule. 
the election results are in, and our Democratic coalition has been declared the victors. However, there's not enough seats in the legislature for a majority. The riots have become a huge power after the elections, and they almost eclipse the entire government. We've been forced into minority rule, stuck cooperating with riotous extremists. This makes it much more difficult for us to actually move forward with our agenda. With a largely riotous opposition, we will have to appease a far right if we want to get anything done. This makes it much more difficult to stabilize a government after the election turmoil. Some of the new legislators were even caught during the elections alongside paramilitaries and militias. The far right has gained considerable power. This was in total loss, and the third inauguration of President von Nesnesinski. How disappointing elections are. The people have spoken? Well, some people have spoken. Other people? Well, they're going to probably rise up soon and speak about some other things. Oh boy. But more importantly, let's get this stuff done first. Uh, research facilities, expertise. Well, expertise is going up. We probably need to do research facilities, so as long as it's going up at least a little bit, so we get at least the next level, because we're only at outdated research facilities. Modern research facilities would be good. Oh, the critical point. Oh, boy. There's violence and protests and riots happening all the time. It might just be too late. Oh, no. There's a large possibility that disloyal parts of the military joining with the militias to coup our leadership. We have to secure our government buildings if the riots are planning to strike. It might just be too late. Oh, no. A victory for democracy. Secure the republic. Um, Comey is strong and stable. After counting every vote, it turns out the Democrats have received a plurality of the vote. Even more surprising to Comey citizens, it seems that the moderates have decided to go it alone. Without a clear majority of the delegates, the resulting government is destined to be an extremist or extremely weak one. Extremely radical one, or centrist one. Yet the parties of the center left to the center right have decided to gamble that neither the far left nor far right will dare to cause a vote of no confidence so soon after elections. Perhaps the far left and far right militias will give the government at least a month to live? Oh no. Let's see. So, we need to keep an eye on this. So, our current legitimacy is 61, relatively high. Our le legitimacy will be reduced by one every day. The most likely threat comes from the right wing. The left wing is currently highly threatening. The center is currently in power. The right wing is currently extremely threatening. Hmm. Crackdown on instability. Consolidate our power base. Hmm. Withdraw forces. Hmm. Okay, that sounds like fun. With fascist attack on the government. Oh no, the Jack Boo's poise is stomp on Comey. Oh no. Let's draw forces. Wait, so for 35 political power, we get 25 political power. We lose stability. Mm, I don't want to. We basically lose 10. 1.5. Our extremely fragile democracy. Oh no, the strength of the center is about to be put to the test. Oh no! We're withdrawing more and more forces! Who could do such a thing? Oh, you got more peepee -pee, though. I like that. Secure the Republic. Direct action. Stilina speech. I do like that political power, but. Barring some unfortunate extra legal violence by paramilitaries, the biggest threat to the new coalition government is a simple vote of no confidence by the fascist or communist deputies. The new government's first order of business is thus to spend every scrap of influence and diplomacy to gather enough confidence with ply agreements to stay afloat for the year. By guaranteeing that the government will not fall while trying to pass a budget, the moderate coalition hopes to gain some time. Oh no, legitimacy is going down by two every day. Oh no. Oh well. I just want to raid people. The fascist attack on the government! Oh no, the Jack Boots poison stomp on Comey! Oh no! Oh well. Oh well. And a standing coalition. Even the, the vaguest assurances that the government is free from outside pressure, internal pressure within the coalition also needs to be kept in check. When living life on the thinnest of political edges, a single deputy defecting could have disastrous consequences on the government, and so a generous amount of ministries and positions have to be doled to every coalition partner, with the biggest political party keeping a few choice offices for themselves. Now I'm only doing this just because we get a little more stability. It hurts. It does increase our legitimacy, but I want that political power. Oh no! Oh, so look at this. If you'd like to read about this, we go right ahead. False charges is easy. Restoring democracy is not. Increases the center influence. Authoritarian democracy. They are radicals and we are incumbents. Ignore them. Increases influence of the left and right to get more uh, political power. And more stability. We should collaborate. They might be of use to us. I think I want to do this. They are radicals. Nice. We don't like radicals. Except when we're skateboarding. Then we're really radical. Man, that is that is so old. But whatever. But who's raiding Comey? Or not Comey. They don't raid Comey. Who's raiding the Order of St. George? I want to raid their booties. Me. Us. Oh, look at that political power. And you know what? If you want to read about these folks, please go right ahead. But at this point, the center having a coup attempt, being very illegitimate. I don't think I really want to help them out too much. So, surround the neighborhoods, which actually wouldn't be bad for Landforts. 
preempt the assaults. And Comey is strong and stable. Well, as much as I love that political power, I don't know about that. Are we losing weekly stability? No, we're not. 71%. Another attack on the government. The jackboot poised a stomp on Comey again. Oh, no. Oh, extremely low. I love it. <laughs> Non-existent. Nice. All right. So when is the good stuff going to happen? We get 1.6 for every day. That's, that's not very much, to be honest. That's really not much at all. We could probably make more divisions, though. Are we making divisions? No, we're not. That's a big mistake that I've committed so far. Uh, that's not bad. So, if you'd like to read about leftist attack on the police stations, please go ahead. Officer down. Okay. Ikeda, elected prime minister of Japan. Very nice. The passionary government. Oh, the passionary overthrow the government. Oh no! Who could have seen this one coming? A uh, god shall lead us through. Now look at that color. That's pretty cool. But us sisolsk, sisolsk. Social uh, sphere permeation. Um. Sideline Taboritsky. Oh, I love Taboritsky. Secure the concept. Well, stability and war support. Mm, I don't mind getting that amount of stability and war support. That could be really, really useful later on. So we'll do this just a little bit. Before we embark on the journey towards Eurasia, we must ensure that our support base is secure if we start building a top weak foundations. The entire structure will eventually topple. Eur Eurasianists must be placed in key offices, propaganda distributed, and our civilian support is protected. Oh, boy. It's a shame that we're withdrawing forces again and again and again. Two a day is not bad. And let's get some extreme highlight external threats. The enemies of the passionary are not self-reliant like we are. The Democrats enjoy support throughout the countryside, while the leftists are almost certainly receiving support from the WRF. We can use this to our advantage by highlighting the threats that come from outside Siktivkar. We can point or paint our causes more legitimately native to the Republic. Uh, let's keep doing this just a little bit more, just because we're going to need to lose more every single day. Because we're about to get 10 more legitimacy, so. So we're done with this for now. Uh, I'm going to keep... In oh, we got to get better artillery. Oh, we're using World War II artillery? Are you kidding me, man? How handsome love is. Not really, no. Critical instability. Oh, no. What a shame. All right, that's okay. I'm going to do this one more time, at least. Because it's too high for me right now. I'll do it one more time. 2.5. The most likely threat comes from the political center. Hmm. The center is currently highly threatening. The left is currently high th highly threatening. Oh no, our legitimacy is so... Okay, do it again. So low. Yeah, I don't want to do it anymore. It's extremely low, so... Oh, look at this. Oh, yes. Just keep raiding those people over there. The anti-government rights insictive car. Oh no! I, can't, I, gotta, I gotta stop saying that. This will not be the last. Oh boy. I, I wanted to do the focuses for stability, but it doesn't look like we're getting much stability now, is it? <laughs> I love the loot. Oh, the legitimacy is so low. Oh, no. Wow, it's so low. It's negative. Jesus Christ, it's so bad. Well, I think we did uh, what we needed to do here, but the uh, democratic elements restore control. Oh, would you look at that? Democratic rule will be restored, huh? I don't think I've ever th read this one, but so if you'd like to read this one, please go right ahead, but long live the Republic. The counter coup. Now, does that mean we're good to go? The most likely threat comes from the right wing. The left wing is currently highly threatening. The center is currently in power. How many coups are we going to have? Defend democracy? I like the war sport. I mean, I prefer stability right now, to be honest. Restore order? Mm -hmm. I'm not going to do any of these. So if you'd like to read this one, please go right ahead. As well as expel the radicals. Every last resource. Emergency rule. Restore order. Our loyal sympathizers. Followed by Paralyze of Paramilitaries. And then Restore the Quiet. As well as Comey Belongs to the Citizens. Because this is all for the center. And you know, the center's cool and all, but... It's not cool enough. Let's go by 1.5 every single day. I think 1.5 should be good enough. How do we increase the, the threat of the left wing? Man, this is really going to hurt us. 
So we had the center, overthrown by the rightist, overthrown by the center. Can the leftist please do a good job next? It's low. But hey, look at that political power. Look at that stability. It's only minus, I think it's minus 25%, 29%. Well, you're back. Hey, infrastructure reserve. Don't worry, military. Don't worry about the coups happening right now. Just focus on the land doctrines. Ah, good. Good. Oh, and desert equipment. Sure, why not? This is really setting us back. <laughs> oh, it's extremely low. Please, can we get the leftist uh, to do this? Oh, there it goes. Non existent. And? Please don't tell me the right wing is coming back. Please. It's non existent for legitimacy. Do I have like a month for this or something? Oh, there they go. Seriously, it's literally non existent. We have like 6.5 now. The right has seen arm stockpiles. Oh boy. Who needed stability in a time like this? Hey, it's got a little, look, we got a little bit of manpower. Look at that. Not bad. And we literally have no legitimacy. And can we get counter coup, please? Thank you. Thank you. No? Uh, the world, here come the Ordo Socialist elements overthrowing the government. I've definitely not read this one, but so if you'd like to read this, please go right ahead. Has Serov managed to out gambit his rivals? Now, as much as I would love to play as, uh, <laughs> Mr. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Ordo Socialist, I don't think we're going to do that. So, let's shut down the stagnant. In decreases influence. I wish you could see the influence. Let's from the Reds. Align Taborizky. Uh, increases influence. Da -da -da. Flood the streets. Crowd dispersals. Ooh, they use gas. Ooh, the True People's Revolution. So here we go. If you want to read about that, you know, you know what to do. Learn from the Reds. Align Tabor. Oh, there's not even a description here. Holy cow! Appeal to the Russian workers. Flood the streets. Crowd dispersal. Nobody enters. The True People's Revolution. As well as Comey belongs to the Order of Socialists. Well, I don't know about that. The right wing is currently in power, however. The center is currently highly threatening as well as the left, finally. We're going to go down. Actually, we don't need to go down that much further. They'll be down soon enough. So everyone else, don't worry about the government. It's only been cooed was it three times? Four times now? I can't, re I can't even remember. Uh, oh. Hello there. You have a booty we can raid. We would appreciate it. Paramilitaries ambushed. Oh, no. Oh, increases the influence of the Comey left. I love the Comey left. It's preparing me for the campaign after this campaign. But, goodbye, Hitler. The most likely threat comes from the left. Should be paid. Thank you. When can we scavenge for loot? When are we going to have new divisions? How do we get best much manpower back? And we're just... Not enough equipment to train, that sucks. Conflict in the police. Who are they supposed to serve? Oh, boy. Something's going on here. Oh, uh, Germany's falling apart. Germany's falling apart, and my game is lagging so badly that I can see my mouse's blue wheel spinning. Oh, it's so bad when that happens. So bad. These are some of the most crucial, crucial things you need to get early on. Better artillery and literally just better weapons. Wow. Seraph is not doing very well. The Buh Buharanists elements overthrow the government. I'll read this one. There's little evidence that the Buharanists, Buharanist workers' action, as it will subsequently be termed, begins in the organs of states. Most point to concerted general strikes launched within 48 hours preceding the coup as a forebear of the events to come. These general strikes not met with immediate action. The government representatives, for once, failed to show up to reassure the angry workers marching in the streets. No one is precisely sure where the explosion of military support comes from either. Was it the patient work of the commissars or the spontaneous action of radical sympathizers and militias or both? Or both. Either way, no one's surprised when military barricades set up to clam calm the workers and point them back home simply to join the demonstrations. Riding the popular tide, personnel carriers left abandoned by their sides or commandeered as vanguards, of sides festooned with red flags as they move into the capital. The final attempt to rebuff the wave of popular dissent comes in front of the legislature itself, which is currently in session. The armed escort of guards suddenly seem small next to the crowd that have flowed into the streets, their presence almost minimal as the workers demand an entry into Congress to air their views on several pressing workers' rights issues. A gunshot is fired from an unknown source. History's wheels are spurned into action. The rush into the building is quick, even if it is violent at times. The workers drag assemblymen out of their seats. Some still struggling with the captors and atop the podium, Svetlana Bukharina, 
Bukharina. As proclaimed the new premier of the Komi Soviet Socialist Republic, a Slavis Mang Bukharina is called in on one of her rare nest days, or rest days, formally asked to take on an terribly confused Seslav, and the workers' action ends with its ringleaders in equal triumph and disarray, a revolution no one saw coming, except for us, us, the smart people here. Uh, I was about to say she's really handsome, but that doesn't make sense, so... The experienced option. Just shy of 20 years ago, the Soviet Union was beaten by the Nazi menace. However, this did not mean the end of communism in Russia, as the WRRF maintained control over the West Russians until the end of the West Russian War. Despite what some on the right might say, it has only been a few years that Komi has not been under re truly revolutionary banner, considering all this. It is a truth that a Komi under communism is the only Komi with any legitimacy. Such a fact is something that we will broadcast far and wide all across Komi, even reaching into the most isolated parts of the countryside, for the people must know of our legitimate cause. Yes, finally we can do something here. Now, we're not going to withdraw forces. No, no, no. We don't believe in withdrawing forces. That is reactionary thinking. Decreases decay. Ah, decreases the influence of Svetlana Bukharina. And we'll do it again for even more stability. And we'll do it again because we love consolidating our power base. Svetlana, she's a woman who knows what's up. Well, oh, Reich divided. And would you look at that? Nope. Oh, the bombing stop. If you like to read about that, please go ahead. This happens every time you play as a warlord in West Russia or even in West Siberia. So, clear skies, dark clouds. Well, would you look at that? We're going so low with legitimacy, we're actually gaining legitimacy. The propaganda blackout. All across the radio waves and streets of Comey, propaganda blares. A solid chunk of it is our propaganda, but the rest of the propaganda comes from desperate attempts at the center and the right to win the people over to their side under no circumstance. Can we allow this to happen? In order to counteract these propaganda campaigns, we must blot it out in any way possible on the streets. We shall inspire the devotees to tear down the reactionary posters, showing that we will fight them on every front possible. While we rally against the posters and such physical propaganda, we will also utilize what technology we have to find and eliminate and eliminate the radio stations that the reactionaries blare their propaganda from. With luck, we can end all and any threats to the revolution. Crackdown instability. Oh, actually, that's not bad. I don't want to spend any more political power, but getting this much more stability would be really nice, actually. And the game is lagging really hard. Hold on. This more stability would be really good. And get more man... And you lose manpower. Uh, stability, I guess. Even though we're pretty much maxed out. Aiding the party? Bukharina. Lean back in her chair, contemplative. Comey was in chaos. Everyone knew it, from the peasants all the way up to Bukharina herself. Furthermore, it was clear that she needed to stabilize quickly, or else she'd be likely overthrown by some other faction. The Republic itself had a fair amount of resources, and proper application of said resources would probably be enough to stabilize Comey, given time that time that she may not have. Bukharina. Bukharina paused her musings and drank from her cup of tea. It was sweet, but not sweet enough, leaving a bitter t aftertaste in her mouth. Of course, she did not have to stand alone against her enemies. There was always the option of allying herself with major figures in the party like Suslov or her rivals. Their extra legal help would alleviate a lot of the stress from stabilization. It would allow her to focus on more resources and other necessary functions. Of course, there was a more obvious consequence that whoever she accepted aid from would gain influence in the party, which, she, which could prove dangerous. Was it worth obtaining aid if it led her to being stabbed in the back later on? Would her, would her not leaning on the party for help lead her to her government being overthrown? thrown by someone else. Neither option was completely ideal, but hopefully she'd be able to handle the consequences of either one. We can rely on the Republic's resources. Let us ask our communists for help. We can rely on the resources. We will be in a good enough position. The Warsaw Uprising. Oh, come on, Poles, do your best, but fully seize the party. In order to <clears throat> fully control Comey and prevent more chaos, we must first secure the control of the Communist Party. While Bukharina, Bukharina does control the majority of the party, they're still are those with loyalties who are not to the revolution and Bukharina. These are primarily Zadonovites and the most orthodox of communists who see any change as kind of revolutionary, of course. Beyond the ideological differences in the party, there are the rats who seek to undermine us from within. We can try to find common ground with ideological dissenters so that we can avoid infighting, but we must also be certain to carefully investigate so that we can find and handle any and all people within the party who want nothing more than to bring ruin to the communist dream. Reactionary paramilitary activ activity strikes. Um... Well, I mean, this is going to happen anyway, so if you like to read about this, please go right ahead, so. It's extremely high. Oh, yes, please. Actually, ooh, scavenger loot. That's, to me, just a little bit more important. Oh, wait. Why can't we do these guys? Huh. 
I mean, that's extremely high. That's I'm feeling pretty good about that. A strategic alignment. Like everything in Komi, choosing who to align with was not easy. While Bukharina theoretically had the total support of the Communist Party, the reality was much more complex. The various factions all had their own goals, and while they supported her to an extent, it was obvious that they withheld a certain amount of resources for their own purposes. This left Bukharina with a tough choice what to do. She could align with Suslav, getting support from Orthodox Commies. However, such a move would only boost Suslav's already powerful control of the party, and her earlier betrayal of Suslav had most certainly built resentment. Theoretically, she could lean on only her own people for the party aid, but that would likely signal a huge blow to the party unity. It seems she'd have to make yet another tough choice. That's sensible enough, let us align with him. To heck with party unity. Go it alone. We're gonna go alone. Zero? No, 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 no. Consolidate our own power base, thank you. I want at least minus 0.5 every single day. It is critical. Oh boy. We only have 400 political power, that's not enough. We are benevolent, my friends. Long ago, Marx wrote about the specter of communism. He said that it haunted Europe, and that it was a nursery tale that left all in fear. Despite the existence of the old Soviet Union, the specter haunts so many in Komi, from the elderly to even the youth. We need to show the people that despite the current chaos in Komi, we are a benevolent force. While it may be difficult, we have to assist those who have been caught in the fighting in whatever way necessary. By reaching out to the people and helping them in these times, we also gain the benefit of the moral high ground. After all, none of the other parties in Komi would be willing to spend resources on the people in a crisis like this. The people are our lifeblood, and we must support them. Absolutely. And fight to save us all. Komi is a place where there are many, many threats are raiding the people. Whether it's the fascism of Serov and Shoferovich, or the so-called democracy of Stalina, there are countless threats that seek to snuff out the flame of socialism and plunge the people into eternal darkness. Under no circumstance can we allow this to occur. Of course, we must be certain to inform the people that these threats are, as of right now, a constant present or presence to our safety and freedom. After all, it would not do any good for the people to be misinformed about their present situation for all the people of Komi. From the children to the elderly, we will fight for their freedom. And make peace where we can. That's always good to do. Even though we lose war, spirit, war support. While there are many elements in Komi that must be exterminated in order for the state to stabilize, there are also a surprising amount of elements that can be negotiated with. Some of Zidane's old contacts in the DSMP can hopefully be brought over to our side with some negotiating. It is also fairly likely that not everyone involved in the fighting is totally devoted to seeing the particular ideology through. With the right broadcast and propagandizing, combined with continued victories against the reactionaries, we can hopefully peel off more and more of the enemy soldiers. With deft maneuvering, we can hopefully peacefully end some of the many threats of combat communism here in Komi. And fascist raid supply caches, oh no. The people shall be protected. That sucks, but oh well. And here we hopefully will go. We get more stability too. Man, I'd hate to be in South Africa right now. I certainly play South Africa, but it doesn't really interest me too much. South Africa is cool and all, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, oh, that's not bad. I like that. 104 minus 0.75 every single day. Nice. Can't read anyone else. That sucks. Make war everywhere else, though. Not everyone can be won over peacefully. There are too many reactionaries here in Komi that must be destroyed completely. Whether they lurk in the streets of Siktivkar or out in the countryside, to allow any of these reactionaries to exist is to beg for the government to be overthrown again. We must take efforts to root out the reactionary menaces by destroying their paramilitaries. Furthermore, we must move to destroy the radio stations to end their spewing of nonsense, weakening their support base. With time, we can hopefully find and take care of the leaders of the reactionaries, and once and for all, whether they are Stalin or Shoferovich. The revolutionary flame of freedom will never be extinguished by these, uh, <clears throat> dudes. Reactionaries assail communist headquarters. Oh, no, that is not good. But if you like to read about that, please go right ahead. It is what it is, a dark omen for what lies ahead. But really, not too dark, since we still have over 100 legitimacy, so... I believe that the people will see us as the true legitimate government of... Komi. Out of harm's way, all of Komi's is awash in violence. As it will likely take time for violence to die down, we must devote efforts to protecting the people. We may justify it with a need for political support, but in the end, many of the people of Komi are innocent civilians who merely wish to live in happiness. To allow them to be gunned down even for a just cause is disgusting. They did not ask for chaos to envelop their lives, so why should they face the consequences of others' actions? It may cost resources to protect civilians, but it is a cost worth taking, as after all. If we fail to protect those who we represent, are we truly their savior? Hmm. Further escalation? Oh boy. Oh, I kind of want to read this. It was calm. Fighting had been in low intensity at best. The major raids have been non-existent over the past few days. Bukharina was aware or well of that no one was finished, and that such a calm period was merely all sides reconsolidating their forces. She leaned back in her chair, drinking a cup of water. While it would be easier to wait for the other factions to make a move and respond from there, now was a perfect chance to make a move of her own. Bukharina saw herself with two major options first. She can move to lock down the streets, sweeping them clean of the opposition. Such a move would strengthen the internal security of Komi and help stabilize the regime. Of course, this move would also move her to a more defensive
defensive stance as she considered her power in the territory she had. The other major move she could take was to go after the leaders of the opposition. By cutting off the head of the snake, the opposition would be left prone, allowing her to sl sl solidly beat them. However, if the assassination attempts were to fail and fail, the fighting would escalate dramatically, leading to more bloody and risky battles. There was a third option where she locked down the streets and went after the leaders, but such a move could easily leave her overextended and prone to a counter coup. Bukharina. Bukharina. Gently rubbed her temples as she mulled over her options. We need internal security. Go after the leaders. We need to do both to secure the regime. We're going to do both. Uh, we have more than enough support here, so I'm not feeling too bad about that. And agricultural methods. Thank you very much. Out of harm's way, and then Comey belongs to the Soviets. The Soviet banner brought forth much of the Russian populace. It brought industrialization, advanced comforts, and modernity. Most importantly, however, it brought freedom to the people. The disaster that was the Comey Republic nearly led to the people losing these freedams. However, with Bukharina's, Bukharina's solidifying control over Comey, it seems more and more likely that the people will remain free. There will be none of Stalina's half-hearted democracy or Shaverovich's fascism. No, there will only be a return of the Soviets. Signifying that the change of the people will remain f broken forevermore. Forever and ever more, please. Thank you. Come again. Zero days left. I love it when you have negative legitimacy reduction. I just, oh, I, I wanted it, and we're going to get it, son. Ray, Ray, Ray. 115 is pretty nice. Oh, yeah, we, we changed our flag, too. I forgot about that. Anti-government protests and court loss? Oh, no. Can't the police do something about this? Oh, well. The Croatian winner. And we've gotten through it, my friends. We're doing so badly that we're getting more legitimacy every single day. And Kosujin survives. Oh, no. It seems that despite her best efforts, Alexei Kosujin survived her attempt to assassinate him. While we were able to begin the process of poisoning him, Kosujin quickly realized something was amiss, and was able to seek medical attention, leaving him with no lasting effects. Kosujin has also managed to hide elsewhere, and is currently beyond her reach. He's spoken out on a radio station about our assassination attempt and broadcast it far and wide. Such a drastic escalation in the fight for Comey, combined with the method of assassination and poison, will undoubtedly lead to the fighting chaos becoming more and more fierce, which could lead to us being overthrown. It seems that our struggle for communism Comey may become more desperate. Maybe we should be... we should have been more direct? Eh. Selena survives. Uh, this is basically the same thing, so we must prevail. Uh, Vosnesensky survives as well. Man, we really sucked here, didn't we? And the assassination of... Okay, we got at least one person. One out of four is not great, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, just in case, let's go to this one, too. We get more legitimacy. Because we're still extremely high, but we have 571 political power, so that's not too bad. Uh, Gumilev awoke, disoriented. He felt one of his guards shake him yet again, shouting something about a raid. Wait, a raid? He sprung from his bed, rub his bed, not his bread, but rubbing his eyes in an effort to wake himself up. He stumbled out of his bedroom, becoming more and more aware of the nearby gunfire. Crap. His guards escorted him towards the back, checking each room and hallway for a communist. The gunfire intensified as they approached the outside. There will be heck to pay. Gumilev swore to himself no communist do would attack him and get away with it. As Gumilev stepped outside, he was struck by the utter pandemonium. The gunfire was a constant, and although his destination was only a few steps away, it nearly took five minutes before he could successfully enter his backup truck, unmarked. It was perfect for a getaway. One of his guards tried to start the the engine, it sputtered and failed. Gumilev felt a sharp pang of fear as the guard tried again, and the engine failed to start to act, or failed to start. He could feel his heart beat faster and faster as the guard tried once more, finally getting the engine to start. Gumilev didn't have time to feel relief, for he was overwhelmed by a bright flash, tearing him and the entire truck to shreds. Only ash remained. Hey, this, this hot one went down a little bit more, so. Oh, Daily Libertarian Social Sports going down. They refuse tribute. Oh, no. Anyways. Hmm. <laughs> 100% pretty nice. Ah, look at that. Unrust <clears throat> in the party. The revolution secured. Very nice. Establishing a true army. Begin the rebuilding. Unearth the caches. That's good. Soviet training. Reliable commissars. It's not terrible. Not bad, though. The road to Archangos. A pact with the front. Line ourselves with them. An icy reception. Bunkers to the north. Uh, watching a rear. Oh, boy. An equal ally. Shared training exercises. March is one. Secure the party. An orthodox front. Oh boy. The master's mastery of Suslov. Oh boy, something of the light. A party against the puppet master. Um, I'm not really sure if we can get Kud 
really quickly, but this looks like it, it'll happen very quickly, so the revolution's like, here. Despite the efforts of the reactionaries, communism and Komi have survived. We have managed to weather the coups and counter-coups, survive deception, and even seize power. With the stabilization of Komi, the time has come to look outwards. For too long, Russia has remained divided, split from countless, between countless warlords. We will end this chaos and anarchy by first bringing the warlords in a region to heal, then the ones in the rest of Russia. The reactionaries throughout the Russia may think the flame of revolution is extinguished, but they are wrong, for it's only just begun. So, with their administration finally secure, the matter of internal affairs has finally risen to the front of the Communist Party's policy. Ensuring ideological unity is absolutely critical to the unification of Russia under our banner, and so will serve as a primary non-military based task. The following reports show the influence of various factions. Tislav. Zidanev is obviously dead. Buh Buharinist influence is overpowering. Buharinist. Nice. Relax restrictions on ideological de deviation. Hmm. Decreases influence. Suslavite. Yes. Bukharinist thought. Bukharinist thought. We already had that. That's okay. Titan ideological. Ah, relax restrictions is a good thing to do. And we did it. Good job, everyone. We needed at least 100, and we did a good job with it. Thumbs up for me. The trial of the counter-revolutionaries. They woke up with bags around their heads, their hands tied with rope. All they felt was the tight grasp of somebody escorting them and then forcing them to their knees. Elena and Yevgeny breathed heavily as other people were forced to sit around them. The crackle of flames were present around them. What exactly happened? Their heads hurt, their hands were weary, and they felt that something was incredibly, incredibly amiss. With the motion of one of the commissars. All the bags were removed. Elena and Yevgeny looked around, seeing fellow members of the center tied up with them as prisoners. Communist partisans and soldiers were armed, rounding up members of the Democratic opposition. Listen closely. Everyone here uh, is considered a traitor to the Komi Provisional Soviet. You will now be tried against the People's Commissariat for crimes against a glorious revolution. How do you plead? Not guilty, Elena and Yevgeny shouted in unison. Deep down, they held on to some youthful hope that they had a chance. However, as the trial went on, his commissar spoke, and several assemblymen were taken, right, taken away around them. It became clear that this was a show trial. This was the end. Meaningless words piercing their defenses like sh tank shells round the super partisan council of judges assembled against them. They would certainly meet their deaths. However, the communists decided to do it. However, was what occupied their minds. What are you, trying to, what are you going to do to us? We did nothing wrong. Guilty. Let them hang alongside their collaborationist brethren. Despite the cries, despite the physical resistance, this was the end. Elena Yevgeny, with a strike of a gavel, now had their necks wrought around a noose. They had failed. Despite all their promises, their work would be for naught. With a simple collapse of a platform, tears escaped Yevgeny's eyes. Elena remained silent. Both of them composed themselves with a final exhale before their lives were taken from them as swiftly as the floor dropped them below. Before, before, below them dropped. Oh. The revolution eternal, but at what cost? There's no... Cost for the revolution. No cost to bail. No cost that is too high. So be it. Now, last time I played Stabritsky, I took too much time, I think, going down this route. Which might not be good or bad, but... I want to go do this stuff as quickly as possible, realistically, so... Beginning the rebuilding. After so many years, the German bombs have finally stopped falling. While we weren't able to immediately begin rebuilding due to the chaos that enveloped Comey, the time has come to fully utilize all the resources Comey has to offer. We can begin the paving of more roads to reach even the deeply rural lands. Furthermore, we can rebuild the train stations and railroads and use them without the exception, with the expectation that they will be destroyed in a matter of weeks, allowing us to transport more resources across Comey at a quicker rate. While one could argue that there are many new options open to us, an infrastructure drive is the most pressing matter to complete, as a country is nothing without inf infrastructure. Raid successful? Very, very good. The remnants of opposition. Um, if you'd like to read about this, please go right ahead. This happens every time he plays Komi, so let's get to work, shall we? Alright, so. Gumadev has been eliminated. Unknown, 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 unknown. Locate Stalina. Uh, let's go with uh, Ivan Serov. He's a bit crazy. Security forces will attempt to arrest and imprison opposition leaders. I guess we can uh, arrest everybody here. Change of favor, different approach. Expose the war, good. Oh, and we need someone else here. Oh, people have changed. Three. Gebov. Varenikov. How strong is the WRF? Which way did they go? Voroshilov is still there. Yeah, they're probably really, really strong still. Not good. Lower support. I'm going to go below, at least below 50 for now. I want to see what happens here first, and then we'll do the rest of these guys. So, unearth the caches. When the front collapsed and the German bombings increased, the decision was made to hide a large amount of weaponry away so that a stray bomb or two would not leave Komi bereft of weaponry. Now, with the bombings over, we can begin the process of opening up the caches. Some of the equipment may have been destroyed or stolen, but the majority of the caches that we've opened up to now still have functioning weapons. The access to new weapons will allow us to continue the process of upgrading the army, allowing us to be more ready to begin the reunification. 
Uh, if you'd like to read about these, please go right ahead. This happens every time, so the report concludes. Good. Launch operation against them? Yes, please. Uh, let's see. If we, uh, actually, these are just lo locating them, so... Eh, I'll do all of them, why not? It's going to cost us a lot of political power, but that's okay. 48 is not bad. And there's no way... I don't think they can catch up to us, which is good. And then... Dreams of a Nation? Oh, uh, yeah, very good. If you like to read about this, please go ahead. Perhaps the spirit of Komi never existed. Cool. Power vacuum. Let's establish a true army. During the chaos in Komi, we were forced to lean on our militias and the elements of the Republican army that were loyal to us, however. Even though we now control the military, the fact of the matter still remains that the military is defensive in nature. To embark on a grand campaign to unify Russia now with our current military would only lead to failure. Therefore, it's clear that we must revamp and reform the military into the Komi Red Army, so that it can not only defend us from threats, but also help us push aggressively against our enemies and unify Russia, which is obviously a good thing. Ah, large-scale exercises are nice. Anything else here that I really care about? Not really. Eliminated? Opposing resistance to our government, huh? Obviously, that's not a good thing. And... Alright, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. Reports conclude. A hand towards open fire. Oh! Pulsogen, oh boy. Not anymore. Escape from madness. Shiver Vetcher dreamed of numbers. And opposition data reports concludes. Halfway to Dvina. It had been Borisov. Cool. So let's take a quick look here. Actually, we still have successful raid, which sucks. Wow. Stalina still exists. Tabarisky still exists. Alter nationalism doesn't really exist too much anymore. Clash of Shadows has gone down even more, 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 more. Love it. Uh, let's do a gate raid against Tabaritsky. Halt direct operations. Halt direct operations. No, we're good. Exposing resistance. This is Kostigin's fled. Selina's opposing resistance. Bosnesinski has fled. Um, well, we can do that one maybe. Let's we'll do both. Why not? Oh, yes, please. Cool. And then, reliable commissars, Soviet training. Soviet training. While we have done our best to train the army, the undeniable truth is that we are not to par. Many of the other warlords have been able to lean on training schools of various generals in order to maintain a more professional standard, in order to rectify the situation. A decision has been made to utilize the old Soviet training schools to help rectify the deficiencies of our army. It may take time for the results to be truly be felt, but it is a necessary decision, as the army requires modernization and proper training to make it a strong force enough to unify Russia, of course. I just want to raid, man. Just let me raid. Happy are the persecuted. Oh, boy. There you go. If you'd like to read about this one, please go right ahead. The Lord brings out the faithful from the prisons. Too bad he can't get the... Uh, uh, Tsarevich... Re, uh, put back on the throne. So, he's been... Uh, oh, he's been arrested in prison. Good. Good. And reliable commissars. While we are in no danger of a counter coup, the fact remains that Comi isn't exactly the most stable of places. Furthermore, we cannot rely on a large number of politically educated officers due to the fact that many of them were educated against communist ideals. We must begin building a new cadre of new political officers, ones that are fully trustworthy, in order to not only prevent the, uh, an ideological schism between our government and the army, but also that we may, can maintain control and stability here in Comi by preventing the army from maintaining sympathies to our enemies. What happen, have, happened to the Lady, the lady of Steel? Well, if you like to read about this, please go right ahead. I'm sorry I couldn't dele delay them more. That's all that matters. Because she has been arrested and imprisoned. Oh, did they go to... They went with Tukacheski, didn't they? Yes, they did. At least it wasn't uh, the other guy. Z Zukov, which is good, but still. Uh, Oh, that is nice. Halt direct operations, halt direct... Uh, do we want to do this? There you go. New rules of engagement, shoot to kill. Oh, let's go to that. Shoot to kill, I guess. It doesn't really matter, so. Does it go away eventually? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Go prepare a raid? Yeah, raid. I love raid. And actually, the overall state party is stable, which is good. Um, halt direct operations, because it fled, arrested. So I guess we can just take this one. I don't know. And the repressions. The search for the key targets who pose a threat to our stability to our government has finally come to an end. The security forces are standing down and focusing their efforts on other pressing matters. Let us hope that their mission was not in vain and the stability of our young administration has been ensured. We've done enough. Good. Go, 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 go. Oh, they got in a circle. Oh, that's not good. Alright, and we will do schools. 
The Road to Arkhangelsk. Out of all the warlords of Western Russia, the West Revolutionary Front is one of the few that could be considered an ally. While the WRRF is ruled by the military, as compared to our civilian rule, it is still believing in the ideals of communism. In order to take advantage of this possible alliance, we should send an envoy to the WRRF in an attempt to open up relations. There are fears that the Front may see as an enemy, as Comey did technically split from it after the West Russian War, but the Front likely needs an ally in West Russia as much as we do. Cooperation with the Front will see us to victory. You hope so. You really hope so. The Welsh Revolution. Oh, they actually have a division there. For now. Victor. Scavenger. Thank you very much. An icy reception. I'm not really sure. Ah, oh, Zukov has to do this. Oh, that sucks. We're going to have to do this one then. It seems for some bizarre reason that the WRRF has rejected our efforts to begin cooperation with them and they have sent the, our envoy home. Due to this, we have no choice but to assume that the front is a hostile force, adding one more enemy that must be conquered in order to reunite Russia. It is likely that the front considers us traitors due to Comey's separation from them after the West Russian War in any case. It is a matter. While the loss of the front is potentially big, allies big, it is not deadly. We must take efforts to ensure that if the front is to invade, it is up to us who will come out on top, not these traitors to solidarity. Uh, we do that. Will we have enough equipment to train? We should technically should have enough, right? Do we not have enough anti-tank? Uh, we're making anti-tank. We need more production and stability and stuff like that. So that's probably one of the biggest things that's really hurting us. Treasure. Good. Bunkers to the north. Well, it would be nice to assume that the front will be passive. It's highly likely that they are mobilizing in an effort to reunify Russia under their own banner. As we border them, it is therefore highly that we will be made one of, if not the first targets of the front. We need to ensure that our northern border can withstand an attack long enough for us to mobilize the majority of our forces. The best way to ensure this is by building bunker complexes all along Sisola. The creation of these bunkers should allow us to a suitable defense in case of a comp, like allowing us to protect Comey from the splitters to the north. Which I don't like. Oh, man. I don't want to fight them, but... We need at least one more division, because it, it's it's not easy playing as Comey. It really is not. Bunkers, but bunkers will definitely be helpful. Followed up with spread confusion. The WRRF, despite its opposition to us, is still ideologically backed by the ideas of communism. Therefore, it is highly likely that there are many in the front who are opposed to its opposition towards Comey. We must capitalize on this by spreading propaganda throughout the front secretly about how it has betrayed the revolution in its darkest hour by turning against a government led by the Communist Party. Furthermore, we must sabotage the infrastructure and minds of the front in order to weaken them. This dual-pronged effort of spreading confusion shall hopefully lead the, to the front becoming more divided, preventing them from attacking us and making a campaign against them easier. So the new stability and authoritarian socialism which should help us out. Oh, and we gotta watch our rear. Oh yeah, that, that's actually really nice. Defense against country. That's actually pretty good. And then we should go watching our booties. While we can't array all of our forces in defense against the WRRF, it would be remiss to leave the border with them completely undefended. Our recent bunker building efforts have allowed our defensive capabilities to increase, but for it is obvious that we must do more. Patrols will increase during the Sisola, and we shall increase observation efforts so that our rear is secure. This increased presence should hopefully deter the front from attacking, even if they are to attack. Our even greater defenses should prevent them from getting any sort of significant ground, and inflict a large amount of casualties, which is good, good, good. We want more land at attack and more defense and breakthrough and all that good stuff. Because we gon' need it. Good lord, we gon' need it. Oh, we're at 91%. Please make more, 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 more. Do we have enough guns for now? I don't want to do this. What am I about to do? I don't want to do it, but... I wish you could lower this to zero for now, but I don't want to do that. I hate doing that. Because you lose all that production time that you have for it. All that efficiency has been, is gone now. But we need support equipment for this cell. And we're watching our rear. Followed up with what? Scavenge for loot. All right. And wipe the slate clean. Ever since the West Russian War, Russia has been polluted with countless petty warlords all proclaiming themselves to be their true savior. No more. The time has come to bring this age of warlordism to an end and restore the red banner of communism. We must begin to move against the local warlords and bring them under our rule. Plans must be organized, troops must be moved, and the bureaucracy must be ready to help integrate the new territories, as there may be very well be a resistance to our rule. It may very well be a long struggle before we are able to completely reuni complete reunification, but we do not. Russia may very well be left in this anarchy for eternity, which would be truly a tragedy. From the Vyatka, the Vyatkanites want to raid our booties. I'm going to see what's around here, because that's where we see the division. So I'm going to go like that, just in case. Alright, good to know. We could do this, but we're going to wait. Oh, crap. WRRF, huh? White flags in the borders? Oh, we must yield. 
Um, what is immediately? So a series of white flags raising on our borders with Tukhachevsky's WRRF front has made it as a clear next target for his expansionist ideas and desires. The radio message that accompanied the event as well has made no doubt of his ambitions towards us. As stated in the radio message, we have three days to surrender to the front, turn over our military uh, to Tukhachevsky's command and make our lands uh, ready to be administered by the Angles government if we are to surrender now. It could, it continues, our generals and government shall be pardoned and is free to go into exile or continue serving under the front. If we fail to comply, one more wa warning will be given, after which our government is no longer guaranteed to be pardoned. This warning is not heeded. Tukhachevsky will meet nothing but total annihilation at the hands of the Red Army. The various commanders scattered throughout Komi have already been assembled, and a general call to arms of the names of the defense of the Republic has been issued. Ceasefires have already been called between various factions vying for power, and the people await the government's response to this clear provocation. With an increasingly powerful front bearing down on us, and their banners still visible from the border, it seems that the time has come to bend either our knee or make a stand which we're probably gonna make a stand probably but let's go ahead and make sure we actually win here first because this kind of sucks that we have to do this come on Vyatka come on get over yourselves oh there goes tricky deck that sucks that justifying gets us it really sucks operation peacemaker yeah peacemaker you call him good war this but wipe the slate clean come on finish 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 Woof. enemies defeated that's good all right, we gotta get over here now. When we only six divisions, that that's uh, that's absolutely one hundred percent unacceptable. I made sure that we had at least seven, but they failed us. But I think that's where we're gonna leave it for here today, my friends. We could do the raid, but uh, let's see, we'll be boarded. It's in factions at war. Uh, they're at war, or we're at war. So it's gonna just it doesn't matter. So after that, uh, the monks, we have to be at peace. We won't be at peace. We won't be at peace. We're, require the ooh, slate clean. Ugh, this is not gonna be good. Building the line would not be bad. Reclaim our sister republic. Well, we'll probably go ahead after this. Probably just go ahead and read it. Secure the party. While our party maintains a unified and organized front for the rest of the world, internally the party is a mess. Competing sub-ideologies and fighting in a general lack of cohesion threatens the very foundation of our state. The members of our party should be made to realize who is in charge and how our party is going to be run from now on. All party members are going to have to be brought under the same page regardless of regarding goals, ambitions, and public relations. Our party will be made into a single unified front under the general secretary's leadership. But... I hope you enjoyed our second episode here. Because tomorrow we will begin the fight against the evil, evil, authoritarian socialist to the north. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like, subscribe if you're new. Check out my Discord link in the description below. And I'll see you tomorrow as we are going to struggle greatly against the folks there. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.